In the mid-1980s, Marla's landlord hired two men to slash her face. Unbelievable. After the attack, there she is after the attack. After the attack, he pretended to be her concerned boyfriend at the scene of the crime. Marla, take us back to that time. I mean, you have this, you know, this massive change in your life. How, how did you work through that? Absolutely. Um, I think that it, it took me a very long time to understand that you can't go back and get back what you've lost. And I think I spent a lot of time in recovery trying to do that when I was finally told by um, a therapist that who you are is gone. And the sooner you let go of that and start to rebuild something new, the faster you recover. So that's, um, if someone had told me that earlier on, I think it would have saved me a lot of years in therapy. But um, now this the guy, woman is... <laughs> well, you, as we say, you were ready to hear it then after all that therapy. I was ready so, to hear so, it. Right. Right. Uh, it, now, this guy, I guess, that spent 15 years in prison, is that right? The guy that did this to That's you or right. orchestrated right. it? And there then he, my them. understanding is he, he actually moved back to your hometown after he came out of prison and now works as an assistant to a plastic surgeon. What, what do we do with that? I, to me, that's just so outrageous. So ironic, right? I, um, I was well, very surprised. Well, it's more than ironic. Right? It, it, I, it, I, I get disgusted when I see that. And what's up with the plastic surgeon that hires this guy? Does he not do a background check? Or, or is this part of his I, giving back to I rehabilitate think... himself? I don't know. He was told, I'm sure. Um, I didn't know until a TV station called and told me that he was, in fact, living in the town I grew up in, in Kansas City. And I don't know if he's still there. I don't know really much, but that's an ironic twist in my story. And, you know, uh, Pat, one of the reasons I wanted to do this story was uh, we, we've been talking a little bit about the war on women with uh, Jane Velez Mitchell on this program. Mm -hmm. And do you have a sense of the kinds of men, I, I know where you're going to go, of course, but how, let's put it this way. If they're all psychopaths, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to preempt you on this. Uh, how, do we, how do we tell when we're in trouble with somebody that has the potential to do this? Well, Dr. Drew, I don't know that we can tell until it's probably too late, but we can tell early on that this guy is excessive in his desire for power and control. He's a very manipulative person. That's a person that doesn't have our interests at heart, that doesn't care about us or love us. We want to run away from that kind of person because if you stay with them, it gets more and more obsessive. And people will ask, why would a guy do this kind of thing? Why this horrible kind of thing? Well, it's a part of sadism, really, and, and extreme power and control because not only do you hurt the woman, but for every day of her life, you know she's suffering, and that gives you a thrill. And not only is she suffering, but every day of her life, and I think Marla can say how hard this is not to do, you think about that bastard, shall I use no other words but that, who did this. So he can t retains that power of control because he knows he's in your head forever, and it really right. is hard to knock out. It's true. You, you, you develop against your will a relationship yep. with your violator. And um, forever, really. Yeah. You know. I am it works. So sorry. It works, I and that's so... why they do it. It works. Mm -hmm. Ugh. Now, uh, Marla, my question, I guess, is uh, did you have, have you had to look at or how have you been able to heal your relationship with men? Trust is a big issue. I think that was probably the biggest issue in my recovery, being able to trust again and um, you know, feeling betrayed not just by the violation and the attack, but by the criminal justice system in the aftermath and, and the media, sorry <laughs> to say. But um, I felt like my life had been hijacked and trust has been an ongoing issue I think that I still probably struggle with to this day. And, and can I say, I sort of, I'm very codependent and so I want to make you feel better. And I, I got to say, <laughs> well, I got to say you look great. You really look great. Thank and, you. And, uh, you, and you, know, you, you know, Tina Fey has got a scar on her face. No one ever notices it. You know what I mean? It's really? a lot of extremely important, successful people. I, well, well you, you should meet her face to face and she doesn't, uh, doesn't bother her a bit. Now, yeah. Tina Nash, a British mother of two, was brutally beaten last year by her ex-boyfriend for 12 hours. After, then after strangling her unconscious, he gouged her eyes out. Take a look at this. I almost don't want to see it. It's like, I feel like a ghost. Like, um, you know, I can hear everyone around me, but, you know, I can't even see my own hand in front of my face. I can't even, when I hear my kids, I can't, um, sorry, I can't see their faces. Marla, is your advice for this woman virtually the same as what you had to give yourself? 
I think it would be. I mean, her her situation, of course, is much more extreme than mine. I had a few cuts to my face. I think my my recovery was more psychological, and was more about the way I was treated and the prejudices I felt were directed at me in the aftermath. And I don't. I hope. I hope she doesn't have to um, confront that. Um, she has enough with her physical. Um, injuries to deal with it. I hope she doesn't face the same kind of blame the victim prejudice that I yeah. had to face. No, I, I can't imagine that. But thank you, Mike. Marla, and thank you, Pat. Yeah.